who invented the standard international cartridges? I've known them as Pelican cartridges for 40 years, but did they actually invent them? This is a really good question. For those of you that aren't aware, these are pen cartridges, and uh, they're filled with ink, and these particular ones are called standard international. You have your standard international short, which is often like the default more common size, and then you have standard international long, which is the exact same thing except twice as long, really just for greater ink capacity. Not all standard international pens take this long one, but standard international pens should take this little shorty. So a lot of pens are made with standard international, such as the ones I just referred to a second ago, like Conklin, Edison, Monteverde, Jinhao, you got Pelican, you got a lot of other brands that take standard international. Some, are some brands are proprietary, you know, Pilot, Lamy, Schaefer, Parker, things like that. Um, but uh, I'll get into the history here just a little bit, and I do want to say um, there's uh, fountain pens uh, on Wikipedia has a pretty decent page about the whole fountain pen history, and Richard Bender actually has a really good website that has, the, the navigation of the website is not my favorite, so I can't even supply you a direct link to this page, but if you go to his site and are able to navigate to a page that's called Filling System Histories colon cartridge pens, uh, talks all about the history of the cartridge pen and how it came about. Now on his site it does not say specifically who came up with the standard international cartridge pen, but it does kind of tell a little bit of the history of the cartridge in general, which honestly the earliest of cartridges were glass or metal tubes or uh, ceramic tubes. This dates back to the 1890s, honestly. Some of the earliest cartridge pens, they were not reliable, did not work very well, but it wasn't really popularized until the mid 60s, honestly. There were some cartridges that were around earlier than that, but there weren't good plastics back then. So it wasn't a really good delivery system, especially for a disposable kind of thing like that. Uh, and then you had World War II, which kind of changed the whole you know, uh, perspective on things in terms of pens and stuff like that. Uh, and then really was kind of Waterman, from what I'm able to research, that uh, was able to develop a, a reliable, you know, plastic disposable cartridge. However, Waterman wasn't like the biggest and most influential brand back then. So, you know, it's also credited that Parker, once they kind of adapted the whole cartridge idea, they were large enough to really make it take hold, especially in the U.S. So Parker is kind of credited with it, but they kind of stuck with their own proprietary thing. Schaefer did the same thing. They went with their own proprietary thing. But back then, it wasn't like, I'm gonna make it proprietary instead of standard. Everybody was kind of like, you know, it was like going towards the North Pole, trying to get your flag in the North Pole or South Pole or whatever. You know, that was the, they wanted to be the industry leader. They wanted to make their brand the standard. So it's kind of, ambiguous in terms of history of who actually created the standard international cartridge. I did some research. I was not able to find anything specific about who definitively came up with the standard international. There were several different standard cartridges that were around at that time. And it was just kind of a lot of different, and in fact, a lot of pen models that were coming out around kind of the mid 50s, 60s and whatnot uh, were available with different cartridge filling systems in the same pen model because they were trying to accommodate as many people as possible and trying to really figure out what was going to be the standard. So eventually, late 60s, maybe early 70s, they were starting to kind of come up with these standard international. And uh, standard international, I'll say from research as well, there's no like ISO standard on fountain pen cartridges. So there isn't truly a defined standard, it's really more of a marketing term and kind of a, a generally agreed upon design for this standard international, which is perhaps maybe why it varies a little bit from one manufacturer to another, because it's not uh, a truly defined thing. So what happened was when you started to see that a standard started to become generally adopted, really, I don't even know exactly when that started to happen, but especially in recent years, last 10, 15, 20 years, you've seen that having a standard international cartridge has allowed a lot of smaller companies to get a reliable nib and feed delivery system that fits with a 
converter or a cartridge, and they design a pen around that. So not everybody's having to reinvent the wheel in terms of their pen and feed and everything design. The standard international pen, you know, uh, ink delivery system, I'll call it, that is in these various pens that I've mentioned is a generally reliable and pretty good system that they then design pen materials and sizes and colors and things like that around that base there. Sort of like having a standard engine that you build a car around. That's how it kind of works these days. So it's really been a boon for small pen companies and even not as small pen companies to really wrap around that standard international thing. And that allows ink companies like Dymene and I'm trying to think of other ones that have a lot of cartridges, Private Reserve, things like that, J.R. Bond, to take their ink and put it into a standardized delivery system that fits across many different pen companies and allows pen companies to design pens around the standardized thing. So it's really done wonderful things for the pen world. And there are still a few companies that are kind of hanging on to their own proprietary design for various reasons. But that is, uh, that is what's up. So uh, I know that Pelican was involved kind of in that in the early days. Pelican, Mont Blanc, um, even Waterman kind of jumped into the, the standard international thing. So I think it's kind of like all of those like vintage companies from that period of the late 60s, mid 70s or so. Um, really helped to form what would become the Standard International, but I don't know who exactly to attribute it to. So I guess we should just thank them all.